Hello friends, my name's Nernight, and welcome back to the Life is Strange 2 episode 4, where we just had to leave Daniel in the hands of some over-religious zealots. So, yeah. Oh, and our mom's here! For some reason. Yeah. Can't walk back in there, that's fine. It's weird. <laughs> Damn. You look bad. Eh. Gotta change that dressing soon. Yeah. Karen seems to be on the move quite often. <clears throat> so, before we walk out here, um, I have to note, I don't know my father, my biological father, and this is his biological mother, it seems. Um... I would I would call my father Michael because I don't know him. Uh, he left when I was a baby, uh, so I have a weird kind of connection with this whole parent just showing back up in the life thing. And we're we're gonna we're just gonna see how it goes. Um, I'm gonna try and give her the benefit of the doubt because that's what I would do in real life. And I, maybe Sean wouldn't do that. I don't know. I kind of want to stay true to Sean's character, but I still have to kind of do what. I would do because these are my choices so I would really like to give her the benefit of the doubt and understand why she's left for so long because I would like to know that in real life which I kind of have a couple ideas but whatever it's a really weird lighting I wonder how long Karen has been here did she see one of Daniel's miracles, miracles? I know I shouldn't peek, but whatever. That's what I would do. Glad to know she learned the lesson. <laughs> it just says condom on it. Karen did her own road trip to get here. <clears throat> Turning forward to look back, making the same choice twice, twice, my solitude days and dreamy nights just to find myself looking forward to turn back. Damn. Karen does like to capture the world around her. Tracing closer every mile, my heart goes racing, sore. I remember, know the feeling. There's no fighting back that beating, tearing apart my core. Early morning blues, coffee, red-eyed truckers and sad families. Bad eggs, not the waitress's fault. She's a quick, hurried one, probably ending a long night shift. Tag says Clementine, 22-ish, redhead dyed brunette, eyebrows and skin tone don't lie, Irish descent. Owner's daughter, maybe? Mahoney's vague, polite smile, busy mind. Mild, clumsy, looks distracted, anxious. Young cook called her Clemmy. Brother, boyfriend, boyfriend. She apologizes when the orders are late and she's the one getting roasted. Do mom and dad know you're dating on the job, Clemmy? Mixing up work with love seldom makes a good match. That's a brand new baby lump under the- That a brand new baby bump under the strained apron? Stained apron. It's 2017 and young folks are still busy making babies. I guess nothing ever really changes. Wow. Okay. Oh. Wrong one. So Karen did check it out. <clears throat> Wonder if she saw Daniel in action. Ugh. Gross. This country is just way too big. For all you people that live in, like, Europe, um, you know how you can drive maybe an hour or two and you end up in another country? You drive three hours and I'll get to another state, and then I can drive six hours that. across that state before I can even touch the border of another one. And that's not even going straight, like, down or across. That's just like, yeah, it's, our country is stupid big. Our, our states are about the size of the countries in Europe. If that makes you um, feel any better. <laughs> I really should finish reading this someday. Maybe. I got some fish in the oven I'm going to eat after this episode. It's going to be delicious. Nothing in there? Oh. Sorry. I still have no game. I want to take that. And the house always wins.
New souvenir, new souvenir. I've got so many things in my bag. Hmm. Okay. Uh, what's new? Okay. Uh, right, we've seen this one. Happy birthday, Daniel. Yep, okay. Okay, I think that was the last one you read. May 9th, Flores tried to frame me again. Can't blame her for trying. That's the drawing I made. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Had to knock Joey out so I could sneak out of the hospital. He's a true ally. I can never think of an effort getting to help me escape. You, why are you writing this down? I only hope you won't be in any trouble because of me. Why are you writing this down? You idiot, this is how you get Joey in trouble. I'm still not fit for the trip. Headaches are killing me. Have no cash, no nothing. Chased by so many ghosts. But gotta focus on what's important. Reach Nevada, find Daniel. Or Nevada, depending on where you're from. So hard to drive. Fucking miracle I haven't been in a wreck yet. Gotta pull over soon so I can rest. Driving in the dark with one eye is the absolute worst. Would feel a lot safer walking on the edge of a cliff on a moonless night. Oh, uh, these, these cool drawings. Racist dickheads beat the shit out of me because I wouldn't let them humiliate me. My whole body hurts, stomach, lungs, but I don't care. My only priority is to find Daniel. No more gas. Gotta rock. Walk. End of the road. <clears throat> May 11th, 2017. Got picked up by a trucker not far away from Haven Point. I was nervous, but the guy was sweet. Even hooked me up with a sandwich. Really needed that boost. Okay, Daniel has been brainwashed by a cult. He wants to stay with him, and I fucked up with this reverend and just fell right into her trap. I'm so stupid. Also, Karen, what the fuck is she doing here? How did she find us? Don't want anything to from her. Nada. Well, you're probably going to have to help each other to get Daniel out of this fucking situation. Oh, this is how many things I wrote while I was... Okay. Bannon House, Reynolds House, Christmas Market. Okay. Alright. Hey! Yeah. Can I do that? It said Q for souvenirs. Oh. Yep. Oh, okay. Kinda want something from each, like, thing. If I can have it. But I'm not sure I can. Kind of like the idea of the tooth from the first episode, though. I don't know how I did that, but okay. Um, right. I think that's it. Hmm. <clears throat> Okay. Karen was always into low tech. I even think it's the one she had back then. Probably. Easier to travel around. This thing is killing my back. I bet. I got bruises on my bruises. Okay. We've come a long, long way, buddy. Mm-hmm. This place is quite remote. Good. At least nobody will be looking for me here. Probably not. I would like to draw, please. I got a few moments to myself, so... <coughs> Pardon me. Let's practice.
These mountains really inspire me. Yeah, that's cool. It's important I to me. Who lives around here? It's so wild and. It's important to me that I get all the drawings. Like, super important. I guess that's an okay start. But I can keep going. Okay. Just draw now. Don't think about anything else. Got a good picture of it. I'm ready to draw now. Why? Hey! Enough. Stop barking. Oh my god. Is that a tentacle monster? I could see myself stopping by this motel during a road trip. Taking a dip in the pool after a... Guys. Uh, right. Back okay. to reality. Sorry. <sighs> okay. Looked outside, looked in the drawer. Um, let's look at Karen's note. <clears throat> Be right back. <laughs> we'll find out. Popped out for supplies. I'll grab some food in case you want to eat. New socks and shorts in the bathroom. All yours if they fit. Might be a good time to contact Jacob. His number is on the letter he sent. Be right back, Karen. Jeez. It only took Super Mom eight years to give a shit. Dear Miss D Mrs. Diaz, my name is Jacob, and I worked on, I worked with your sons and Daniel on a farm. Dear Mrs. Diaz, my name is Jacob, and I worked with your sons Sean and Daniel on a farm in California. There were some problems, and Sean went missing. I'm with Daniel now in Haven Point, Nevada. He gave me this P.O. box address, so if you give this, I think Daniel might be in danger. Get this. He needs help to get out of here, and I can tell you more if you contact me at this number. Please hurry. Thank you, Jacob. Huh. This isn't our tablet. Struggles with too many open apps, but should be okay for basic browsing. Geocat. Password is blank. Hope you find your son. Yay. Technology. She came prepared. Uh, this is a lot of information. You guys, you guys can read this. I'm not going to read all of this. Reverend Mother doesn't look too <laughs> humble. A slice of Haven Point. I'll read this one. Um, one of the great mysteries of Nevada is how. It balances the Holy Spirit with the Holy Dollar. Few tourists travel from around the world to seek religion here, but in the tight-knit Christian community of Haven Point, Nevada, a charismatic pastor has inspired a devout following. As she told me in an interview at her peaceful church office, Reverend Lisbeth Fitcher has spent her whole life as a humble disciple of the Lord, filling the call to share his love and glory in this dark age. I had a powerful experience as a child that put me on the righteous path. She smiles gently and touches my hand, but this is not about me or my story as much as anybody in our wonderful church can tell you. And tell me they did. The members of the Universal Uprising Church speak with hu hushed awe of their pastor and how she inspires them. Reverend Fisher just wants to share her blessings with us, says Corey Johnson, 34, her recent addition to, addition to the congregation. I was pretty cynical before I went on one of her revivals. You could feel the electricity when she spoke. People were crying, including me. Looks like a roach motel. Mm, yeah. Super but uncomfortable, but it's cheap. Nobody will find me there. Nice pool, but dusty as fuck. Nice roadside motel, cool stuff. <coughs> Hot dog man, mustard party too. Play now. I like this this fake ad on the side that makes me really happy. Okay. Um. Wait, I can go outside? I'm not going out. That's probably Better wait for best. Karen in here. Okay. Fine. Uh. Yeah, alright. Let's do it. <clears throat> Hello? 
Jacob, it's me, Sean. Sean? No way. I've been waiting to hear from you for months. So you, you found my note in your sketchbook? Yeah. Where are you? <laughs> you have to come here, Sean. I know. I'm not far. In a motel. Good. Listen, I, I can't talk right now. I gotta go. Wait! Daniel, how's he doing? Meet me tomorrow afternoon on Brandy Highway. There's a, a, a junction just above Haven Point. There's a, a, a wild mice ranch billboard there. I'll be there at four. Jacob, wait! I can't talk, Sean. Be there tomorrow. Please. Damn. He couldn't really talk. All this is so messed up. Okay. Keychain? I'm so drained. Kinda pretty. Wonder if she made it. Alright. I guess let's wait for Karen. So what else am I gonna do? Let's just rest while I wait for her. If she comes back. And to sleep he goes. Hey, sorry it took so long. Fucking store was packed. How are you feeling? Nothing broken? Alter boys don't fight fair? Yeah. I'm okay. Double cheese, no onion. Right? Take it. That'll do. Got you some gauze and uh, antibacteria stuff for your eye. Thank you. Hey, don't wolf that down. Or at least take a breath. <sighs> like you care. Sean. I do. <sighs> Come on, Karen. Don't act all hurt. It's too late. Where were you when I broke my leg when I was 13? Not with me. When Daniel got a bad flu a couple years ago, he didn't sleep next to him every night. Where were you? Where were you? Fair enough. So let's talk, because we do have to get your brother out of a cult. I'm listening. How did you two survive alone on the road for that long? We just got lucky and got some help along the way. Total strangers. We even had our own little family. Good. How did you go to Beaver Creek? You know I don't have to answer your questions, right? You're right. So tell me what you want from me, Sean. Nothing, Karen. I mean, what do you want from me? A fucking hug? Hey, I just want you to know what I did and why. If you care. So, ask me anything. So what exactly are you doing in Nevada? You live around here? No. I'm uh, way out in Arizona. Sean, I told you. Your friend uh, Jacob wrote my P.O. box and said Daniel was in trouble. That's it. <laughs> Arizona? Holy shit. It's just lizards and rocks. Yes, I found something there. New York didn't really do me good, so... All right. Why did you bail on us? I wasn't meant to be a wife or a mother. I thought I was supposed to. I tried to pretend for many years. 
but I was unhappy, and the urge to leave just became unbearable. I had no other choice. Are you serious? You chose this life. You fell in love, you made your own choices, right? Making your own choices doesn't mean you can never fool yourself, Sean. After I had Daniel, you were about eight, and Esteban's garage was getting busy. There was so much going on around me, yet somehow I just felt that my own life was just slipping away. Felt like an empty shell. Sean, it was the hardest decision I ever made. I knew I might never see you all again, but I took that responsibility. Did Dad know about all of this? I was honest with your father. We did family therapy, but it wasn't about him. It was me. He was heartbroken for months after you left. Years. I was too. I was in love with your father. He was the best person I ever met. But just not enough for you. Something was missing from the equation, yeah. I was. Yeah, okay. Think I've heard enough. I didn't have a choice, Sean. We only have one life. And I didn't want mine to be spent in regrets. You shouldn't have had kids. For years, I fooled myself. <clears throat> Thinking I'd find satisfaction into what society expected me to be, and that was my mistake. I hope someday you can understand that. It's a retarded explanation. You shouldn't have had but kids. But I never stopped caring about you. For what it's worth, I am sorry for hurting you and Daniel and Esteban. I know you are, Karen. That still doesn't change the way I feel. Of course not. I know I can't change the past, Sean. I don't think you would. I need some air. Sean, whatever you want to say to me, this is the time. Let's just get it all out in the open, see what happens. So, what did you do when you left? Where did you go? I pursued some dreams and failed, learned the lessons. I guess all this time I tried to find out what really matters to Which me. Which doesn't involve a husband and two kids. It does to a lot of people. And I totally respect that. Just not to me. I wasn't good at making plans, which is what most of modern life is about, right? School, job, marriage. Ask my mom and dad. They wanted me to follow their rules, their faith. Oh, I tried. But I wanted to find my own way, with no security blanket. Family, religion, social norms. It's just all about security, after all. But it all just looked like a sweet golden jail to me. I tried to escape that. Yeah. Hope it was worth it. It was. For now, I've found my place in the world, with like-minded people. I'm at peace with my fuck-ups and my decisions. How do you make peace with bailing on your parents, your husband, and your kids? I know, that's hard to understand. 
But I think people should know who they are. And not fake it for anybody. I mean, I get you wanted to leave and stuff, okay? But why would you ghost us like that? Not even a fucking birthday card. I just... I thought if I vanished, you would all move on. But I wanted to contact you guys so many times. I almost did. But you wanted a clean break from us. I didn't want to be a part-time, pissed-off mother. Not fair to any of you. I left when Daniel was still very young, so he wouldn't remember me. <clears throat> cool plan, Mom. You heard Daniel way worse. He thought you took off because of him. I know. I hope I can make it up to you, Daniel, someday. I can start by getting his ass out of that church. Cult. Whatever. So, did you ever actually miss us? Or Dad? Of course, Sean. <sighs> I do miss your father. He had such a big heart. He could brighten up a rainy day. That was like his superpower. But above all, I missed watching you grow up. See how you saw the world. I missed sharing these moments with you, Sean. We used to do so much stuff. Like when you taught me to ride because Dad sucked. Or when we went camping near Vancouver. Just me and you. You always loved night skies. I did stargaze a lot when I was in California. Trust me, the further south you go, the better it gets. Whatever. You sound so... careless. It's like you can't even realize how much pain you've caused. I do care. That's why I'm here. To help you and your brother. If I didn't step up to help him now, I couldn't live with myself. Hey, um, mind if I bum a smoke? Sure. Still got a few left. I really don't want him smoking, but I think it's important for him to bond with her. Wow. I haven't seen that lighter in ages. Your dad loved that thing. I know. Only thing I have left of his. No oh, man, Esteban hated when I smoked. He didn't want me to die an early death. <laughs> Fuck. Life can be so cynical sometimes. I remember he would smoke sometimes. Long ago. We didn't fight much. But when we did, I would go out on the porch and light up so I could calm down. Esteban would come over and ask for a drag. And then we'd just look up at the sky and watch the stars or the planes. I do miss that. I used to do the same with my best friend, Lila. Sitting on the porch. Just letting time go. That's when you know someone is good to you. When you can just sit together, <laughs> shut the hell up, and watch the universe do its own thing.
We should go back inside. I gotta change this dressing. Okay. Let's go. Sean, I know I can't change the past. <coughs> or what I did. But this is about helping your brother. You gotta trust me this one time. I know. It's still hard. But yes. We have to be a team to rescue Daniel. We can do it. Okay. How? We need to get in touch with this Jacob. He obviously knows a lot more than us about the church. Well, I called him when you were out. We can meet with him tomorrow. Okay, good. I also got these, just in case. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Better take care of the eye. So, do you need any help with that? Uh, yeah. Yes. Thanks. So, you feel like telling me the story here? When we have time. Gotcha. The squishy noises. Uh, the squishy noises. <sighs> Here, try this on. Still need gauze. You're a pirate now. How do I look? Great. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Big day tomorrow, so we should get some rest. Yeah. I'm ready to get Daniel. Uh, I want some food so bad, but I want to keep playing. Sure, he's gonna show up. He better. He promised. Well, if he doesn't find us, we'll find him. I can't believe how much crap you guys have been through. You have no idea. Makes me want to punch in the face each and every asshole that got in your way. <laughs> yeah. Good thing we got to meet amazing people, too. Life on the road is all about that. The sweet encounters. Hope I can see them again someday. Oh, the birds up in the oh, corner is so will. cool. So tell me about Daniel. What's he like? Uh, special. Well, he's definitely special. Hope so. He's your brother, right? Mm-hmm. Heads up. Is that him? Yep. Wait here. Mm. 
What are you wearing? Sean, what happened? <laughs> Jake, I'm not mad, but you better explain everything. I didn't know where else to go. Listen, I, I saw Daniel come back to the camp that night. Like he was in shock or something. Then I heard all these sirens and I got scared. I just, I packed a few things, I, I took a blanket from your tent, and we, we left together. I also kept the cash you made on the farm. Uh, it's in my car. You did right, Jake. Thank you. You have no idea what he looked like when I found him that night, Sean. He was in bad shape, with a gunshot wound, and all by himself. I, 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 I couldn't just leave him there. So, you came back here after you escaped, but with a dazed little boy, and everybody was cool with that? Trust me, it was not an easy thing for me to come back. And, yeah, they took us in. That's what they do here. They take people in. Except they didn't want to take me in yesterday. I'm telling you, to be careful with the Reverend Mother. She's waited her whole life for somebody like Daniel. The Reverend knows how to manipulate people. She's good at this. He wants to stay with her. Daniel has faith in the Reverend now. <sighs> yeah, not afraid of that Lisbeth of yours. I'm getting Daniel out of here. Uh, come on. There's no way they're gonna let you take him away. Well, too bad. <coughs> We're not going to ask for their permission. You must be Jacob. I'm Karen. Hi. Okay. I don't know if you want to do this, but I... I have an idea. I think school must be over by now, but Lisbeth will stay at the church with Daniel for his special classes. That'll give us time to sneak into the compound before we get to them. I'll be on the lookout. Keep watch in case it all goes to shit. Sean, stay on the walkie. Sounds like a plan. One more thing. I, uh... We have to get my sister, too. Sarah Lee. <laughs> really, Jacob? Come on, man. She's with your parents. I know. She's sick. Please, listen, Sean. She's not safe here. She's sick. They believe in everything Lisbeth says. And she says she'll cure Sarah with prayers. I know you understand, right? Yeah. Him, Jake. Yeah, definitely. We need his help too, Sean. We gotta get the bread out. Okay, Jake. Come on. <laughs> I'm listening. I'm Lisbeth sorry. Lisbeth knows what's wrong with Sarah Lee. We just, we need to find her medical record. I think it's in her home office. Then I'll go get Sarah Lee while you get Daniel. Okay? Sounds like a plan. Fine. Sure. I'm gonna trust you on this, Jacob. I'll get for you, Karen. What if Daniel won't go with you? Uh, that's a good point. He will. No, he won't. I know him. No. No, he won't go with you. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. That was a wide-ass turn. Okay. Oh, I can't pause. I have to wait till loading's over before I can pause. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and end that episode there. I know not a lot happened this episode, but I think it's important character building. It's it, I think I think it'll be okay. Plus, I really just want to eat. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode of probably this Lunar Night setting out. Bye.